tell me about designing for an actor. And you look at an actor, an actor walks in and does his reading, and the designer sits there and goes, hmm, how do you think about the actor's shape and how you design for that actor? Well, I, there's one step just a little bit before that, and that is that I, I basically design for the character, for, the, for what is written on the page. If I know the actor, like knowing you, I know that there are certain things I won't dress you in and there are certain things I will dress you in. I know your skin temperature and color, but in many cases I don't know who the actors are. But I have to send in these drawings, costume drawings, etc. So I send in the drawings for the, for the character that the actor is going to portray, hoping that what's going to happen is that the director is going to direct the actor into that character. They're going to discover it. And if I'm on the target, then that will work. That costume design will work. But then you look at them and realize, no, I can't do the cut that I wanted to do because the body won't take it. The color temperature isn't right for the skin tone. So you make, so you make the compromises. I don't change the character. Right. I just change, compromise in the, the textures of the, of the fabrics, the clothing, in the color, in whatever the case may be. So uh, the challenge is for someone like me who walks in and I'm sort of like this, mm -hmm. as opposed to an actor who's like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, what would you do with, with tall, taller shapes than with rounder shapes? Well, with taller shapes, it, it basically is in the torso. And, and one of the things is stripes and what have you. You know, putting stripes on somebody's tall, it's straight up and down, just emphasizes the tallness. And if that's what you want to do, that's fine. Somebody who's a bit rotund, you don't put stripes going sideways because that emphasizes, those are just basic things, you know. I always feel more secure working with the solid colors anyway, that they always know they're going to work. But... Um, Say, say formal dress, 19th century formal dress. Um, what's, we, in fact, just the other day in one of my fittings, it came up that actors are getting taller. And our stock that we have at the Shaw Festival, which goes back, you know, not quite 300 years, but goes back 50 years, some of the stuff, we're noticing that the vests don't fit the actors anymore, that the tail coat, the tails, don't fit, that they're up here now and they should be down here, that the distance between the waist and the neck and the torsos are changing. You can lengthen trousers, you can let them out, but on a tail, a set of tails, formal wear, it's a lot more difficult and complicated and therefore you have to rebuild new. But I've noticed this for some time, that the, the, cha the, the change in the human uh, figure is definitely changing with our diet with what we do, etc., and actors are getting taller. And is that the only change over time for actors' bodies? Well, yeah, if you, if, for example, you, you go into, say, military uniforms. Uh, the reason I'm saying all this is because these, those are structured things, like, you know, formal wear, military, etc. They're very highly structured pieces of clothing. And though, that structuring is done for the physique of the time. The soldiers that we have today in those wonderful red coats are, are, are at least a <laughs> foot taller than the little 19th century guy who was at the Boer War, you know. And in his day, he was tall. That, we could see it. Go to any museum in, in Britain, to the, uh, to the Wallace Collection, look at the suits of armor. It looks like children are wearing them. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, we're getting bigger. But take a body type like me, right? Yeah. So I, I, I'm cast in a part where you have to make me more uh, manly, more whatever. What would well, you do with me? Well, to do that? okay. Well, in doing that, there's all kinds of things one can do. First of all, in the choice of fabrics, that was going to what I would say butch you up a bit. You know, butch me. you know. So the fabrics will, will will help a lot. There, there's padding. I mean, you know, I've done this with with uh, in military uniforms, for example, where you want that wonderful chest and shoulders and what have you. I mean, there's there is padding goes into those jackets to puff out the chest a bit. There's shoulder pads go in to make the shoulders. You know. Um, no, this can all be done, and, and a really good tailor, not the designer, a really good tailor, you know, are, are magicians, absolute magicians. They, they, can, they, can, they look at the body, they look at your design, and they satisfy both people, the actor and the designer, with the way they cut the clothes and the way they shape it or, or not shape it, depending. 
Let's go back to me. Let's talk about me again. Oh, yes. Here you are, you're designing me. Now you sort of, you butched me up as it were. Uh, make me ridiculous. Oh, well, I'm ridiculous anyway. But well, I did that once, if you recall. All right, tell me how you made me ridiculous. <laughs> well, again, it went back to the character that you were going to be playing. This is in the... The, 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 the Bizet's Dream. The Bizet's Dream, of course, in the yeah, Czech the way, Republic that we filmed. The Czech Republic where we were filming, yeah. I mean, your character was quite bizarre. You know, a womanizer, alcoholic, painter, some wild painter who had a parrot that kept screaming, if I recall. I so. Something like, something that. like that. <laughs> anyway, the dialogue led me to believe that when the first time we see him at the door, the first time the little girl sees him, that this is a bizarre, ridiculous person. So what did I do? I dressed you like that, you know. I dressed you as a, as a fencer, first of all. Then I did things to the costume. I stuck the pink heart on. I had wine stains down the front of it. And then I think I put a Napoleon hat on you because you kept doing all that French Napoleon stuff. And I put a Napoleon hat on you and a scarf, if I recall, or whatever the case may be. It looked ridiculous, but it worked wonderfully so well. So ridiculous is sort of uh, uncoordinated discombobulation of bits and pieces? Well, or? not necessarily, but it, but the ridiculous means it's a little bit more caricature, at least in the way I look at it, a bit more caricature than, than actually realistic. It, it could also be just a heightened reality as well, you right. know, like making a top hat taller, you know, right. et cetera, you know, it makes it a bit ridiculous. I did a show once in, in Vancouver uh, with Shaw's Arms and the Man, and the actor Jeff Jones was in it, who, as you know, Amadeus and all that sort of stuff, and he was in it. And it wasn't, didn't take me long to realize that when I'm looking at the bio photo, because I knew everybody in it, and Paxton Whitehead was directing it, that all the actors except for Jeff were under five foot six. So I made the door five foot eight. So they could walk in and out of the doors with no trouble. But Jeff came up to it and the door came right to here. Then on top of him, I put the tall Busby. For him to get in the room and still be a gentleman soldier, he had to almost squat down his knees to come into this little world, this little Bulgarian world, right. where, where Petkoff and his wife sat with their so-called library. Right. It was hysterical. You know, and it all, what made him ridiculous was, was just the fact that I lowered the door. Not change so the costume, you see. Just so here's a door. designer playing out their sense of humor. Oh yeah, absolutely, especially in that show. Now I'm not so, you say I was young at the time. I'm not so sure if I'd pull that trick off today. You know, Why not? well, maybe, maybe I'm not so prone to take cheap shots anymore as I was when I was young. <laughs> I, think, I think that was a cheap shot. Paxton, I mean, he had every right to say, no, 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 don't do this. But he loved it, too. But then, you know, Paxton, he, you know, he's a, a comedian of, of the finest metal. He probably enjoyed it. And Jeff was a clone of Paxton. We, I watched Jeff, yeah. you know, he was just a clone of Paxton Wayne. Right. So how much leeway do you use with an actor? Or does it depend how well you know the actor? I mean, how uh, many actors could say that to you and you would have responded in that way? Almost any actor. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Very generous of you. No, it's not. They got to wear the clothing. But what I have to do is they, uh, listen to them, and if I believe what they're saying, then I will make changes. It won't be big changes to the concept, because those costume drawings, they are created for a director who's going to direct that actor into that drawing. Right. But it, there are times when the actor wants to put something into it that I have not given them and right. will ask for it. There are times when I will say, no, I'm not going to do that because of this, 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 and this. And I very rarely ever get an actor upset with that. When, uh, when will you say no to an actor in a fitting? Right at the beginning. <laughs> I mean, you don't, don't, you don't waste the time of your talented technicians who are making the clothing. You don't allow it to get into almost a finished state before you make the changes. Right. It's got to be right off the bat. If I sense there's a problem, I, you know, and I've been in this business long enough now that I can sense there's a problem in the fitting room, it doesn't take me long. Sometimes I will evict everybody out of the fitting room and just close the door and sit down with the act and say, okay, what's the problem? And then, if I believe them on what they're saying, you know, then, then I'll say, well, then 
we'll make you know changes. You know, and that's it. But very rarely do do I get that. In fact, I get a lot of actors who love character in their clothing, who who just love broken down clothes. You know, they say, "Yes, that's exactly how I feel." You know, is it harder to help a woman shape uh, with a costume or a man shape? Yeah, it's harder for women. Some women, yeah. It, it, it just a little bit harder, especially when you don't know them. If, if I know the actresses and have dressed them enough, I know where the pitfalls are. And that's not a pun. <laughs> so it is, it is important really to know, to know the bodies. You know. Um, a designer who will remain nameless from Quebec, very famous designer from Quebec. Be, uh. <laughs> yes, zip zip. Um, I was watching a production of Tartuffe with Jean-Pierre Romfard in playing Tartuffe and uh, no he was playing Argan and um, I was down in the dressing room corridor meeting up with some of my friends who were in the production etc cetera, etc cetera, when an actress went up to the designer and said I can't wear this clothing can make a change to it it's not helping me you know I need I need this this and this and this and he very rudely just looked at her and said, when your acting improves, I will take care of it, and walked away. Now, I would never have the courage to say that, ever. 